What's up everyone? So it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of the rock type. It's probably my favourite type to play this generation, and there's been a lot of funny jokes in the community surrounding that, about how I think rock is probably a lot better than it is. Uh, so today I want to discuss why it is that rock is considered a bottom tier type generally. Firstly, let's discuss what I mean by bottom tier. I'm not referring to any one definitive monotype tier list, because honestly I don't think such a thing exists. But a popular trend among many tier lists I've seen happens to be that rock is towards the bottom. Secondly, as I point out every time I discuss any viabilities or any tier lists, I urge you to take this with a big grain of salt and play whatever type you enjoy, or whatever type you're good at regardless of what tier it may be considered. So with all that out of the way, let's start to discuss uh, my thoughts on the rock type. When looking at any type, the first thing I tend to do is look at what Pokemon are available to me uh, for my team. So looking at the rock type, we immediately see there are some standout Pokemon. Things like Tyranitar, Tyrakion, Nihiligo, and many others come to mind. If anything, I think rock is a bit spoiled for choice when it comes to choosing Pokemon. That said, I do think Rock has a good few downfalls, and a lot of them are because of its type matchups. First impression from many players would be that Rock is a defensive type. Unfortunately, it boasts the most amount of weaknesses paired with Grass, with 5. That is not quite defensive in my eyes. This is especially problematic in the Monotype tier, as all your Pokemon will share the Rock type. If you fight an opponent's team who is one of your weaknesses, it can be quite difficult to withstand. That said, defensive options certainly do exist. Uh, Cradilly is fantastic against the water types, or maybe Aerodactyl against ground types. Typically speaking, a balanced playstyle and monotype is extremely powerful, and I'd argue it's what led such things as water, steel, flying to becoming top tier threats. The problem here is Rock suffers from so many weaknesses, and only being able to have six Pokemon on the team, it's just not good enough to play balance. In theory, Rock can cover all his weaknesses. In practice, it's not that simple. Let's take Credilly for example. Credilly is a fantastic tool against the water type, but maybe against something like fighting, it really doesn't offer much. But let's say, for example, that Credilly is just our water answer. We have other things for fighting. That's fine, but Credilly shouldn't and often can't wall an entire water team. Any competent water team will have ways around Storm Drainers, maybe a close combat Barriskuda, it has Urshifu, or a plethora of Ice Beamers. So once this Credilly goes down, if that's our only water check, we're probably going to lose the matchup anyway. Or let's use the Aerodactyl example. While it is immune to ground, all it realistically does is stop my opponent from clicking Earthquake six times and winning the game. The ground team will have tools to deal with flyers. That's a given. Because of this, Rock needs additional support to take care of its bad matchups, such as air balloons in the case of ground, or maybe a chuckleberry in the case of fighting. While you can easily build a Rock team to deal with pretty much any one of its weaknesses at a time, that same team may struggle to cope with other weaknesses. For example, a rock team built to counter the ground type may end up having little to no options against a steel team, which in a tournament setting can be pretty okay, however in ladder it can be quite inconsistent, and that inconsistency is something I want to discuss more in the video. So I've discussed rock's defensive properties, what about his offensive properties? It's pretty strong, right? Well, yes, with raw numbers, Rock is a pretty strong type. Typically, it doesn't lack in the offensive department, and even its resistances, fighting, ground, and steel, it has plenty of strong coverage to deal with it. It even has pretty strong access to entry hazards in the form of stealth rocks, or even sticky web with things like Shuckle. While on paper this all sounds pretty excellent, unfortunately, Rock carries a burden that no other type does, and it is the crippling inconsistent accuracy. To this day, I'm not quite sure why rock moves have terrible accuracy, but it's a pretty common trend. Looking at its spammable stab moves, such as Stone Edge or Rock Slide, they don't have 100% accuracy. This is something the majority of types don't really have to worry about. But realistically, how bad can poor accuracy be? The answer is very. While its peak performance is quite impressive, consistency is super important in competitive Pokemon. It's the reason you rarely see attacks like Thunder over Thunderbolt at high level. Missing on a crucial turn can make or break a team or the entire match. Unfortunately, Rock just has to live with its inconsistency. Its more accurate moves are either too weak to consider using or just poorly distributed. Rock is also very much a physical oriented type, having very few special attackers or special attacking moves itself, which is 
okay for the most part, but there are some Pokemon this can become quite a big issue with, such as physically defensive pecs, uh, Ferrothor, Evio, Liporeon 2, or just the general burn status can really, really stop Rock in its tracks. On top of all this, Rock's general speed tier is not the highest. In fact, it has the lowest average base speed of all evolved Pokemon, with the exception of a few notable standouts like Aerodactyl, which is generally not desirable in Monotype. This is due to how prevalent uh, Choice Scarf Sweeping is in the Monotype format. For example, we're fighting a Grass team and maybe one member outspeeds my entire team and can just click Giga Drain six times and win. So now that I've discussed offensive and defensive capabilities, there is one very interesting thing about the Rock type I want to discuss, and that's its interactions with weather. While Sandstorm is categorized as a Rock weather, it is unfortunately a double-edged sword for the type. Sand boosts Rock special defense by 1.5, which is undeniably excellent, and it does minor chip damage, which is pretty annoying for the opponent's team too. However, this same weather that supposedly benefits the type actually actively powers up one of its hard matchups, the ground type. While ground will typically run their own sand in the form of Hippodown, it also appreciates the fact Tyranitar is probably setting it for them, allowing its Excadrill to go absolutely wild in this matchup. While the same can't exactly be said for the Steel type, it doesn't actively benefit it usually, however it really doesn't hinder it either, which kind of is unfortunate for Rock. On top of this, Smooth Rock has been banned from the most competitive monotype formats because of ground types abuse of it. This pan, while helping Rock withstand ground types onslaught, also goes to actively hurt it pretty much in every other matchup. This idea of individual type bans is something that I want to discuss in more detail in a different video sometime. So what about other weathers? Well, I'd argue Rock isn't the biggest fan of them. Let alone the fact they override your sand, they also have pretty strong options against the Rock type. Rain is self-explanatory, but even Sun and Hail make easy matchups a little bit more difficult. Sun allows for Solar Beam spam, which can hurt the Rock type, and Hail allows for the Veil Setters to lessen the damage of Rocks, which is not ideal given the fact we talked about earlier that Rock's main power comes from its offensive presence. It already has to deal with inconsistent stab, but now has the potential of not even KOing Ice types after it. So I talked a lot there about the steel and ground types, and there's something I kind of want to touch on in comparison to rock. Personally, I don't like comparing types, as I think every type has its own personality and fantastic tools. However, these three types are not dissimilar. According to Bulbapedia, rock has among the highest defense stat of all types, and the keyword here is among, because unfortunately it's beaten out by none other than its sturdier brother, the steel type. On top of this, it has a laundry list of resistances that Rock simply can't compare to. While they shared the weakness to ground and fighting, Steel has plenty more options to deal with these weaknesses, making it undeniably the better go-to defensive type. But I said earlier that Rock is quite a good offensive type, so that will surely differentiate it from the Steel type. Well, sure, but sadly this is when the ground type comes in. With a higher average offensive stats and a very strong offensive toolkit, but in Sandrush, it can be quite difficult for Rock to even compare offensively. One could argue that Rock exists in the weird intersect between these two types, but unfortunately in this situation, the Jack of all trades, Master of None, is simply not better than the one. Lastly, and most importantly, I want to discuss Rock's matchups. While I said earlier it can in theory beat any type, it doesn't mean it can do so consistently. It's certainly a strong type against things like Fire or Ice, which are relevant matchups, but not overall the strongest ones. What about things like Flying or Bug? Well, these I think are a little more shaky, especially the Flying type, who has access to powerful tools such as Landorus, Celestila, Skarmory, just to name a few, who can seriously give trouble to the Rock type. This issue is compounded by the fact the majority of Rock types are physical and can easily be walled out. There was also two tools out of Generation 8 that Rock absolutely hated, being the Heavy Duty Boots and Body Press. The introduction of Heavy Duty Boots has been a thorn in Rock's side, as it can't even pressure these types easily with its Stealth Rocks. And Body Press can be used as an incredibly powerful offensive and defensive tool in one that is super effective against the Rock type, while making that Pokemon super defensive and almost impossible for the Rock type to break through as well. Now, I'm not implying these types are losing matchups for Rock, and I think without these tools they'd be certainly easier, however, they're definitely not free wins either. On top of this, Rock is also weak to Steel and Water, which are two matchups you really don't want to be weak to, given how powerful these types are and how popular they are, making laddering Rock quite difficult. 
So with that concluded, these are my thoughts on why I think Rock is considered a bottom tier type. Overall, I think it's actually quite a strong type, especially for tournaments or maybe league play, but for laddering, definitely one of the harder ones to work with. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Rock type. You can leave them down below in the comments. I'd like to discuss it, it being my favourite type at the moment. And of course, I'd like to hear your feedback on this kind of new format of video. I want to do more of these going forward. They're, they're quite nice for me to be able to discuss my thoughts on the monotype format and maybe individual types that I can go more into depth with that I can't necessarily in a showdown live. So with that, I hope you have a fantastic day everyone. Take care and I'll catch you next time.